Okay, engine compartment of our Superbird. Our third one. We have one tribute and two real ones. This is the second of the real ones. The other one's a four speed. This one's an automatic. Call them on a chip. Uh, again, they just the way these cars came. Heavy duty, 26 inch radiator in it. Uh, this one has power steering, power brakes. They were never offered with air conditioning. Uh, so air conditioning was not available on these vehicles. Cast iron uh, intake manifold just the way it came in 1970. Uh, Carter uh, carburetor on it, cast iron exhaust manifolds. This particular car still has the uh, heat shield still present on the uh, driver's side manifold. Exhaust system on the top here, the uh, cast iron manifolds are the original manifolds for the car. The um, distributor is a Presto Light distributor just the way they came from a factory. It has uh, silicone plug wires but they're black. They look just like the ones that came from uh, Chrysler back in 1970. Again, power steering and power brakes, you know, dual stage master cylinder. The um, battery is a original equipment style battery. Uh, it appears to be uh, the original type that they used back in this era, um, but it is a, a maintenance free battery. Uh, Roadrunner horn for 1970, purple just the way it should be. The original uh, windshield washer tank. Uh, everything on this engine compartment uh, appears to be uh, the way it was when this car was released, the, uh, the correct uh, air cleaner is still intact on it with the correct breather and tube going to it. Uh, electronic ignition module, of course, for 1970. Uh, heat to the uh, passenger compartment with the correct squeeze clamps. Uh, hoses still hooked up the way they are. Uh, also, it has the uh, hold bracket on the uh, inner fender panel just the way they were uh, made in 1970, squeeze clamps on the um, primary hoses, top and bottom, correct style hoses also for your radiator, fan shroud, uh, the way it was. This one has a, it does not have a clutch fan, this one has a, uh, a steel, it feels like a seven blade fan, I can't really see, this nose is so long it's hard to get in there to see. Yeah, it is a seven blade uh, solid mount fan on this guy. The uh, radiator core support doesn't appear to have ever been disrupted in any way. Everything appears to be the original squat welds and everything on it. Uh, the tin piece that goes between the radiator and the front of this nose, which is also a metal nose. The, uh, uh, the aftermarket ones are fiberglass. This is not. These cars came with a metal nose on them. And uh, this one still retains that metal, uh, metal nose. Uh, these were 375 horse, 440. Mopar engines. They uh, were a, a standard motor in this car. It was not available with a 383. The only other upgrades that you could get, you could get a six pack with this motor or you could get a 426 Hemi. The only two options that were available uh, for a driveline on this car. Underhood is painted white just the way it should be. Uh, it has the holes for an underhood pad, an isolator pad for heat. It could be installed. I don't know if the car came with it or not. There is a build sheet with this car we could check to see, but uh, at this point it does not have one. A lot of guys leave those off simply because of the heat retention. If you take it off, it allows a lot of heat to dissipate through the hood of this car. Uh, again, the fantastic uh, engine compartment, 375 horse, 440, a lot of originality to it. The fender tag still intact and very legible, correct fasteners on it uh, uh, the way it was. Uh, when the car was built, all your ID tags are still intact on the motor, on the air cleaner, on the inner fender panel. Uh, there's no deterioration whatsoever evident on the uh, uh, inner panels of this car. Let's go around the rest of it, see what we can find. Okay, you're at our Daytona Beach store, and today our guest is, guess what, a Superbird. I don't even tell you what year, because I only made it one year. And if you don't know what year that was, then you don't know what the car is. We're going to show you everything about it, everything that we possibly can. Uh, these cars left a lot to be desired, fit and finish wise. Uh, they were done very hurriedly to get them ready uh, for a race season and try to get Richard Petty back on board. But uh, this car was a total rotisserie restoration, complete rotisserie. Uh, so we're going to show you all the amenities of it, uh, everything that fits and what doesn't fit and any imperfections that we can pick up. We try to be as thorough as we possibly can. You can see the fitment of the hood up to the cowl area and the fender. Uh, this is all different than a standard Roadrunner, completely different. Um, the, um, the fitment is as nice as can possibly be. 
a little bit high on the very uh, nose piece here. The gap is really good on it. You can see it's about an eighth of an inch. It's a little wider here, about a quarter of an inch, goes a little narrower here down to an eighth, and then about three sixteenths there. And then we're back our uh, eighth of an inch back down the side here. Uh, it has the correct style cup hood pins, uh, stainless steel, the way Mopar made them. This is an added piece, and it is tin. It goes on a standard style Roadrunner hood, so you can see the absolute added length of this vehicle. This also, on a real Superbird, is tin. Um, it is metal. It is not fiberglass. And this one is um, still retains its original steel nose. If it's a fiberglass one, that's because it got kissed somewhere uh, during its lifetime. Uh, fitment of the fender to the front, again, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch. Uh, not the greatest fitment, but that's the way they came. You're just not going to find one of these that's exemplary fitment-wise. Headlight buckets the same way, Roadrunner designation. There's a little bit of, um, I don't know what it is, it's something in the uh, finish. Uh, certainly it doesn't designate that you would uh, uh, repaint this. The paint on the vehicle is very nice, very high quality paint job on it. Uh, but there's a little something that's, uh, whatever they finish the uh, vehicle before they paint it, and it's under the paint, you can see it. Again, you're not going to replace it. A couple of dents right here that someone had something on the air cleaner and closed it and uh, you can see a couple of very very slight protrusions uh, these are fiberglass obviously uh, this bucket fits as well as these do they just do not fit any better than this this is as good as it gets a little rubber piece that goes on the front um, this particular car does have optional fog lights in it one on each side hard to get down to see underneath this guy uh, it does have the, uh, the correct grading for the uh, air intakes on it, and it has a correctly painted spoiler. The spoiler should be the color of the car, not painted flat black. A lot of guys through the years painted them flat black. They thought it looked a little better. But the color of the vehicle is correct for that spoiler underneath the nose. Very dramatic front end on these cars. They have a... Well, they're, they're, there's just nothing else like it. I mean, it, it, it's a super bird. <laughs> Uh, the Dodge Daytona is the only other car that uh, in any way compares with it. Uh, for 1969-70, they had the Superbird. Um, correct color, correct everything. Uh, we have a ton of documentation we're going to show you at the end of this presentation uh, on the vehicle, but it is a total rotisserie car. I just tried to pick out all the imperfections that I put on the very nose of it. Um, I really don't see anything else that I can point out. Again, the only issues are going to be fitment, really. But that's as good as these cars got. They just were not any better than this. Uh, that's just the way they were made. Let's go down the side, see if we can find something there for you. Okay, drivers, I'm going to wear myself out going around this thing. It's so long. Uh, dry, driver's side of our Superbird. And again, you can see the fitment leaves a lot to be desired on these cars. There is a piece of foam in here that they tried to install to help take up some of that gap, but uh, that's normal fitment for a Superbird. Uh, the front valance area, bottom of the fender is uh, uh, actually a very good fitment there. Side marker light is really nice as can be. They didn't come with trim pieces, that's just the way they came. The um, cowl area to the hood, to the fender, to the door actually is very nice fitment. And the door to the front fender is really great, look at that. Clean down to the rocker panel. Just as nice as you'd ever want to hope to find one. Uh, nice legible uh, VIN tag on it, correct way for arms and blades, trim around the front window. Really nice. And this is super bird only, this piece of uh, uh, polished stainless that goes on here. It was an aerodynamic aid, really, uh, but it, it adds a lot of uh, pizzazz to this uh, uh, installation that Mopar did with these cars. The uh, base of the windshield where the uh, metal dash transitions onto it. As absolute clean and clear as you could ever hope to find one. Tinted windshield, sun shade paint on the top. Boy, the dash of this car is just, just absolutely the way it was when this car was produced new. The uh, padded part of it doesn't have any uh, warps whatsoever in it or cracks that I can see from in here. We'll get a little better shot once we're inside the car, but I don't really see anything uh, from the outside of the car. And again, tinted glass in the front end. 
Uh, looks like tinted glass on the sides too. And no patina whatsoever on the uh, wing area. And of course it is a super bird, so all super birds, all of them, had a vinyl top on it. Uh, they were all vinyl top cars. Daytonas were finished out. Uh, super bird was done hurriedly. They had to go ahead and uh, uh, finish the back end up somehow. And they couldn't finish the metal work to go ahead and get it ready for paint. So what they did is vinyl top. Uh, standard mirror. Wipes whiskers just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Window fitment is absolutely right on the money. You can see that that just seals as well as it could possibly ever seal. And that's the only way these came. They didn't come in a post coupe. They only came in a two-door hard top. That's it. Uh, new chrome on the door handle. Paint on the door. Down to the rocker panel. Door fitment is really nice on this car. Very, very nice. This door could actually... It could go in just a hair. We'll have to adjust that in just a little tweak. What happens is just from usage, you know, it ends up pulling out a little bit. You get a little tiny bit of an overhang. And uh, all it takes is an adjustment, which we will do on the uh, vehicle. Quarter panel, scoop, 70 only. Uh, just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Oh, almost forgot. Drip rail. Not a single marker imperfection on it, just as nice as you could hope for. And the vinyl top also, the installation into the drip rail um, gutter here is just as nice and tight fit as you could possibly hope to find. And this is, uh, again, road runner only, the added pieces to uh, help uh, the installation of this convex back window. It's about, eh, about that much longer than the standard back window. It's convex instead of concave the way a standard road runner window would be. Hat shelf uh, is correct for the year and it looks just as nice as you'd ever hope to find one. Quarter panel. Of course, Plymouth designation on the side. They didn't want you to miss that. Uh, road runner. Super bird. This is reflective here. This is not, but the bird itself with his helmet, that is really reflective. Shows up really dramatically at night. This car is all tin. I can even feel the tabs on the uh, inner uh, drop downs. The side of this car is just as nice as you'd ever hope to find one. There's uh, no imperfections in the paint. There's no dents uh, whatsoever evident on the side or chips or scratches or marks or anything. There's fitment in the front that just normal for the bird. It had those couple little tiny dimples that you probably won't even see, but I'm telling you they're there. You have to hunt for them to find them, but they're there. Uh, other than that, the wing, uh, it's a super bird and a white one. Uh, 15 inch rallies, that's the way these guys came. Um, fantastic car, it's a total rotisserie car with that much paperwork, and that's no BS, we'll show it to you in the end here. Let's go out back, see if we can show you something there. Okay, rear deck of our super bird. Again, eighth of an inch, the entire perimeter of that deck. It is a little bit, a little bit high on this end. That means have to adjust this deck down just a little bit. When you do, it goes right down to where it's supposed to be. Uh, up against the back window, also the trim around the back window is, is just flawless. There's no marks, no dents whatsoever from installation. It's just as nice and clean stainless trim as you could ever find. Obviously a very dramatic wing. Aluminum. Um, paint on this car is just absolutely stunning. Absolutely beautiful paint job on this car. Okay, tail lights the way they're supposed to be. A lot of simplicity here. <coughs> not, a, not a bunch of glitter or anything. Nice clear lenses in, set into the uh, painted uh, uh, basils around them. Plymouth designation on the back, our little Roadrunner here with his helmet getting ready to run. Roadrunner designation. And that, that guys is right on the money. Chrome on the bumper. Absolutely flawless. There's not a mark on the top of that anywhere. The correct style exhaust tips out the back. Nice clear backup light lenses. 
Uh, no marks or dents whatsoever in the uh, rear chrome bumper on this car. The fitment is just exemplary. You can see it lines up as well as it could ever. Okay, everybody asked for documentation. What do we have for documentation? How about everything? Uh, there's a copy of a title from a family trust where it was left in uh, 95. Uh, there's other documents that show all the uh, uh, restoration. There's slew, I mean an absolute slew of paperwork showing when the car was restored and everything uh, uh, restoration-wise in it. Um, two of those actually, two complete folders of uh, uh, parts and uh, uh, things used during the restoration. Again, uh, um, this is part of a Govier report, I believe, showing uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, color options on the car. There's a copy of a 95 title. Here's a history of the car, a complete history telling you this is number 1343 out of 1920 of them. It's also the 310th car out of 544 would have been seat 440 column shift. Goes on to show you everything about the car. Um, here, there are two build sheets with this car. There's one. Here's the other one, and it just shows NASCAR late, and here's the uh, uh, copy of those two. Here are the actual ones here. These are copies. These are the actual build sheets here. We've got to be really careful with these guys. Um, special parts and maintenance schedule for, for the car that was issued by Chrysler. And this is, there's another copy of build sheet, but this is everything uh, as, as far as the restoration goes, showing the entire restoration of the vehicle from day one. Uh, up until what you see here today. A complete uh, rebuild of the engine, complete rebuild of the chassis, uh, everything on the car. You have total documentation and pictures. So you have everything on this car to authenticate it as a, uh, uh, a real Superbird, uh, especially the build sheets. Those are very, very difficult to come by. Um, I guess Chrysler Historical will reissue them after a period of time. They you have to wait, but uh, uh, we do have them. So we have all the documents uh, that you'd ever hope for for a real bona fide total rotisserie restoration white super perk. Okay, passenger side. <clears throat> Again, our Plymouth, our Plymouth designation. Side marker light, just as nice as you want. More tin. There's absolutely no Bondo on this baby. Absolutely nothing. So I did a very nice job of putting the vinyl top on this thing. There's not one little tiny, absolutely nothing that's out of place on this thing. It's as nice as you could ever hope to find one. It really looks good. Wipes whiskers. Grip rail. Again, our super bird uh, added piece there. Absolutely no patina at all on the wing areas, the other side or this side. Again, tinted glass. The um, wife's whiskers are as nice as you could ever hope to find. The stainless bead that goes up against the metal is just spot on. Couldn't fit any better than it does. Door handle, same as the other one. I don't see any imperfections at all on it. Door fitment here. You know what? Same thing again. Then the door has to be adjusted in just a little tiny bit make it fit the way it should. Chrysler Pentastar, the way they came. Look at the fitment here. This is really nice, actually. Very nice. Again, no trim on the front. Side marker light in the front, and the front piece of the bottom of the fender is nice as you'd ever want to find. Didn't find a single chip, scratch, or mark in the paint. Absolutely none. We just went around the entire vehicle, correct that antenna, um, trim around the front window. There's nothing. This is as nice a vehicle as you could ever hope to find. These are not inexpensive cars. Uh, they're very difficult to find. They only made a handful of them. I don't remember what it was, 1600 or something like that. Not a whole lot of them. Um, Great color combination. It does have a bench seat and a column shift. And we do have another one in a three pedal car, four speed car. Uh, this particular one has a raft of information with it. Uh, the uh, pictures during the restoration, uh, documentation on the car, 
Uh, I believe there's build sheets. There's, there's pretty much everything in there. Again, the fender tag coincides with uh, all the other uh, VIN plates on the car. 15-inch um, rally wheels, just the way it should have come from the factory. Uh, the car just is a, it's a real iconic car. Uh, if you're in the market for a Superbird, and uh, that's the only thing that, if you're in the market for a Superbird, that's what you're going to buy is a Superbird. Not a Roadrunner, not a GTX, nothing else in a Mopar line is going to be a Superbird. Uh, anywhere you go with the car, you're going to get a following that you can't even imagine. You can't take the car anywhere without uh, playing 20 questions with 20 people. Uh, it's a fantastic car, uh, great combination. Uh, it's available here at Hanksters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And uh, again, you know, we always try to present these cars to you as best we can, but we encourage everybody to come down and take a look. When you're spending this magnitude of dollars, uh, you should come down and look at the car, drive the car, put it up on a rack, go over it, so that way you know exactly what you're getting. You know exactly what your dollars are buying for you. And uh, uh, we present them as well as we can, but there's a possibility that we could miss them. And I don't want somebody to say you missed this scratch or this mark or uh, this little uh, oil drip or something, you know. I'd rather you looked at it in person, had the uh, uh, latitude to go ahead and go over the car for an entire day if you want. Um, and then you make your decision. But it's available here at Hangsters. It's one of two real ones, one of three that we have available. So we got a blue one, a green one, and now we got a white one. So you got it all. Take a look at it. Okay, this is the interior of our white Superbird. Um, headliner, again, a total rotisserie. Everything in this car has been addressed. Uh, dome light still functioning. Uh, mirror, there's no milkiness whatsoever. It is a day-night mirror. Uh, trim around the uh, front windshield and down the sides, just as nice, as tight as you'd ever want to find. And there are definitely no cracks or marks on the dash pad itself. Absolutely none. Or on the side pieces, the plastic pieces. Uh, let's see here. How about that? There's your original owner's manual still in the glove compartment for this guy. Like I said, we have a ton of documentation for this thing. Uh, Roadrunner uh, insignia in the center. Your, your tri-spoke uh, steering wheel <laughs> with the beefy horn. Uh, just as nice and resilient and fresh as you'd ever want to find. The instrument cluster itself is very clean and fresh. The, the lenses are crystal clear. Instead of, a lot of these you get from age, the numbers on these uh, dashboards will turn yellow. These are still nice bright white. It does not have a clock or a tack, or a TikTok tack. So, um, uh, that is just a dead piece in there. All your switches are nice and clean and shiny, just the way they should be. Correct radio for uh, 1970. Uh, knobs instead of wheels. Wheels only came with the 8-track uh, uh, player. Correct, not redone, but the correct original molded headrests uh, on this vehicle. The correct style interior, the seats with the uh, uh, silver inserts on the uh, black vinyl. Uh, seat belts in the front, shoulder belts in the front also, and seat belts in the rear. Side panels in the rear have nice clean chrome, fresh chrome uh, attachments behind the, uh, uh, again, molded armrests and trash trays in the uh, uh, armrests yet. It was that era. The uh, chrome behind the uh, uh, door actuators and the Again, molded armrests in the front are the same way. Absolutely brand new chrome. Uh, there's a Roadrunner on that door. It's missing one on this door. It should have a little Roadrunner decal here. I think I have one on my desk. I'll put it on. Um, the back section, which is usually wrinkled and distorted some on the uh, headliner where it transitions onto the uh, uh, rear hatch shelf. Uh, is just as clean and nice as can possibly be in this car. Door panels in the side and the uh, window cranks, all four of them actually are all new. Just as nice as can be. The door panels in the front are just as nice as the ones in the back. Absolutely spotless. You can't see it in the video, but I'm sure Devin's going to show you some high resolution photos of it. But when you look into the door jams of this car, it looks like the day that it was born. There's absolutely no deterioration or no dirt or absolutely anything, you know, uh, uh, filth around the hinges, just as new as you could hope to ever find one. Uh, kick panels are nice and fresh looking yet, they're not uh, uh, cracked or worn. The um, 
door sills appear to be the original ones yet, nor do they need replaced. Uh, it has a loop pile carpeting the way Chrysler installed back in these cars. Uh, there's absolutely nothing that I can tell you negative inside this car. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to go over everything and, and show everything that there is, and I'm not showing anything that uh, is a detriment in this car at all. Absolutely nothing. Column shift, of course. It's a complete rotisserie white Superbird. You just can't find them any nicer than this. Okay, we are in our white Superbird. Not too many places can say, yeah, let me see what color one we're in here today. Well, we're in our white one. Uh, let's see what we got. Trindle's working just like it should. It does not have a tack or a clock, uh, no tick-tock tack in it. But it does have a speedometer, and I'm sure it functions. The fuel gauge shows three-quarters of a tank, which is totally out of character for us here, but it does have three-quarters of a tank. Temperature gauge is just starting to come up. We just fired it up. The oil pressure is up nice and high the way it should be, and the amp gauge is working just as it should. Radio. Coming on, but I don't hear any, I don't hear music. Uh, let's see, wipers. We have wipers. We have wipers. Wipers work. We have beep beep horn. Got to have our red runner beep beep horn. The left turn signal just beat itself to death over here in the left corner. And the right turn signal over here doing the same thing for us. So apparently everything in this guy works. Except the radio is questionable, but other than that, I'm going to try to get this drive-in done here early because it's sunny out, and I think it's going to be somewhere around 140 today. So we want to get this done before it gets too hot. Okay, we're going down the road. This thing is a nice car. Okay, no hands on the wheel, just going straight as can be. Can't can't find a thing wrong with it. Let's try brakes, no hands. Um, stop straight. Well, I had an angle there a little bit. I'll try it again here. I'll show you. It's going to stop straight. There, see? Just the way I had it pointed. Nice running car. Temperature just starting to come up. It's running nice and cool. It has a nice exhaust town to it. It's not objectionably loud. No fart pipes or anything on it. It really sounds great. You know, good sound and uh, Stock style Mopar exhaust system has a nice crisp sound to it. This is a nice car, a really nice car. This came out of Kevin's uh, private collection. He's had this vehicle for a while, and uh, it is documented to the kazoo. There is just nothing missing. This thing, documentation-wise, including the entire restoration in a photo album, beginning to end. Somebody did a real nice job with this guy. Let's give it a little squirt out here when we turn around and uh, we're going to watch the Gestapo may be out. strong, does a nice job, it shifts nice and firm and crisp. I like the way this one goes from second to third, a lot of Mopars overshoot and come back and pick it up. This one is nice and firm going into third gear. Very, very nice setup. Straight as an arrow down the road though, I mean there's just no way that you can fault this thing. I mean it just goes straight as an arrow. This is a nice car. Uh, we got three of them now. We got a blue one, a green one, and this white one that we're in right now. And all of these cars, one, the two of them are real, and the price reflects that. Uh, the blue one is just as good a car. It's just as nice a car, and it's not even half the money. It's not even half the price. Uh, so you got your uh, choice of colors. Both documented real ones. Um, the uh, tribute car uh, looks just like one of these. I mean, quality-wise, it, it's very, very high-end, just as though uh, it were the green one or the white one, but um, it isn't a real one. 
So we're probably the only place that has three of these, not one, not two, but three of them for sale at this point. Uh, be a great addition to someone's collection. Okay, this is the undercarriage of our white Superbird. Um, really, really well done. This thing's a total, total rotisserie restoration. Uh, new sway bar links, new shocks, uh, new spindles, new tie rod ends, new uh, pitman arm, new idler arm, uh, new steering link, new associated hardware with the uh, disc brakes in the front, new backing plates. Uh, they are the original calipers, but I'm sure that they've been rebuilt, judging from the uh, condition of the rest of this vehicle. Still has its original slop uh, deflector on the uh, driver's side where it's supposed to be. No marks here from anyone uh, jacking it up on the uh, inner fender liners, the panels that come down. A lot of times those things are distressed pretty badly. This is the correct numbers matching engine and transmission. It is the correct drive line in this vehicle, 100%. Uh, there's no leaks evident whatsoever on the motor, the oil pan, the valve pan covers. Absolutely none. You can see the motor's been out, everything completely re, uh, redone, everything's been addressed on this vehicle. So no leaks on the engine, no leaks on the bell housing area, and no leaks on the transmission. Now, uh, a year from now, look for some drips. But that's just a uh, muscle car, that's just the way they are. Uh, this thing is as nice and clean a vehicle underneath as you ever want to find. It has a gear reduction starter, brand spanking new in it also. Brand new uh, stainless steel brake lines. They've got the wire wrapping on them just the way they should be, but they are stainless as opposed to mild steel. New fuel line the same way, the, the proper attachments for it also. And let's see what else we got here. Uh, the steering box has definitely been out and it's either been refurbished or it's a new steering box. Can't really tell. A new proportioning uh, valve block there. The uh, cooling lines are the original mild steel cooling line to go from the transmission up to the uh, correct uh, radiator that's in this vehicle. New sway bar links. Floor pans are very, very nice and the original floor pans. They don't appear to have ever been. Uh, uh, replaced or anything uh, modified underneath her chassis wise. The subframes, uh, you can see right here, there's a big jack mark here, there's jack marks here, another jack mark here for people uh, lifting this thing up through the years. And the paint's been cracked, obviously it's not going to distress anything or it's not going to compromise anything structurally on this car, but through the years, you know, you, somebody's done something with this vehicle, jack it up quite a few times. Same thing on this side, not quite as bad as that side. Again, paint scratched a little bit here and some light jack marks here also. <coughs> Standard cast iron exhaust manifolds on this guy just the way they came from the factory. Two and a half inch primary tubes going back in. It does have the H pipe, which would be correct for a 440 engine uh, back in that era. This is mild steel. This appears to be stainless. I'm not really sure but it appears to be stainless steel from this point on. It does have one thing that is not original on this car. Everything else has originality just reeking off of it. But there's an addition here, and uh, it's something that you would definitely not want to change, especially when you look and see what the price of this thing is, and not even installation, just to buy it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the name of it. Uh, Gear Vendors is who makes this. It used to be called the Hono Drive. <clears throat> what it does, it's, it's basically a two-speed transmission right here, this section. So you have to get the tail shaft with it that attaches to this box right here, which is electronically solenoid operated. And it has a high range and a low range. So basically what you can do is you can gear this car to have 488s if you want, or 456s or whatever you want for the drag strip. Punch a button, and you have like a 308 gear to take and cruise on the... 95 north to uh, go, go north out of uh, Florida. Really neat setup, fantastic piece of engineering here. Very expensive, very high end. Could you replace it? Absolutely you could replace it. Why would you? This is a definite addition to this car that you definitely want to hold on to. Great setup, fantastic setup. Again, you can see no leaks on the tail shaft, no leaks on anything. Drive shaft is new. It's also a shorter drive shaft because of this uh, uh, 
uh, overdrive system that's been installed in the vehicle. Everything is mounted just the way it should be also. Uh, the chassis hadn't been modified to go ahead and, uh, and, and do anything with it. Parking brake, original and still functional. Still works just like it should. Again, the stainless steel brake lines heading toward the back with the uh, wire wrapping just the way they would be from uh, Mopar. Floors are absolutely gorgeous on this vehicle everywhere. There's no uh, distress whatsoever. You can see where the pinch welds are, where everything was still uh, snapped together at the uh, factory. Um, torque boxes in the front. Uh, and that's weird. There's no marks at all on them. Uh, I would have thought there'd been some jack marks. Maybe a little tiny one here. I'm not even going to call it a jack mark. No. Uh, I don't see there's any jack marks on the back. They must have done it. Yep, they did it on the rear end. You can see the uh, paint being all scratched off on the uh, rear differential, which, by the way, you can see has been out and refurbished. The rear end is painted gloss black. This is natural uh, argent uh, uh, steel iron um, casting material. Uh, subframes in the back where they connect everything is just nice and clean. There's absolutely no rust whatsoever on this vehicle. None. It doesn't, there's not even indication of it ever having any or uh, it's just a fantastic undercarriage on this vehicle. All your structural pieces that come off the uh, uh, rocker panel areas, just in fresh and new, it's clean as you'd ever hope to find. Uh, there's no indication, and I really don't know, I haven't gone over the photos yet, but there's no indication that there's been any work done underneath this car. So if it has been done, it's been done to such a degree that you'd, you'd be proud to be the guy that says, I did this. Fantastic. Um, the um, subframes go up over the uh, rear differential. They're just as nice as can be going back. A couple of light poles from uh, shipping through the years. That guy was torn at one point. That's why uh, Mopar started putting the uh, pads on the, on the back end of these subframes so that you could hook onto them. Uh, gas tank is a replacement gas tank. New uh, galvanized straps to hold it in place. New um, fuel uh, center unit in it. Two and a quarter inch pipes. Eh, I'm going to call them. I'm going to call them two and an eighth inch pipes going out of the uh, under chassis mufflers with. It's really neat. They have the crush uh, places where Mopart did it from the factory. New shocks in the rear. Drum brakes in the rear of this guy. It has the um, correct springs uh, on the vehicle. It has uh, one, two, six on this side and seven on that side. Uh, everything is correct on this car when you start looking at it. It's really a great piece of uh, automotive history. Drop downs in the quarters appear to be all original. They still have the little tabs on them. Both tabs are still evident on them. Cross piece across the back that uh, transitions from one subframe to the other. Just as clean and nice as can possibly be. Uh, trunk floor the same way. If someone's replaced that, boy, you can't tell. There's absolutely no way. To me, it all looks original. Uh, I can't really... The tabs, all the pieces that would have been there from Mopar whenever the car was built are still evident on this car today. It's a nice car. It uh, New uh, brake line hardware in the rear. A little tiny bit of dampness here, not enough to even produce a drip, but there is a little tiny bit of dampness. If there isn't now, there will be next year. Um, nice car underneath. Everything under this vehicle is done to the nth degree. I absolutely couldn't pick out anything other than a couple superficial jack marks on the uh, front part of the subframes. Uh, that's it. That's the only thing that I can show you on this vehicle. Uh, Devin's going to show you the pictures of the uh, serial numbers on the vehicle so that you can see it is a numbers matching. Definitely not a restamp. It's also date code correct. Uh, everything on this vehicle is done to the nth degree. Uh, there's nothing that hasn't been addressed uh, or attended to in one fashion or another. This car is available here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. Superbirds are very rare cars and this one is documented with that much, that much paperwork. So take a look at it. It's available here in Daytona Beach and it's the white one. We also have a green one and then we also have a blue one. So we got three of them for you to look at.